you. Don't crash. How about that? No crashing allowed. You're not allowed to crash. I do not give you permission. Striker. Golden strike. Hello YouTube and welcome to take five of my moto vlog. I actually wrote some notes. 29 lines of notes. We're gonna go over them. We're gonna go over them over the next 30 minutes. So if I take about one minute per line, everything's gonna be nice and gravy, yeah. So the key to this video, my thesis, pertains around why are less and less people riding? And again, so for my thesis, I've got kind of a one basic thing, and that is riding is more for fun than anything else. And unfortunately, because riding is for fun, the danger just doesn't make sense to most people. You know, we crash for so many reasons, um, many of which are our own damn fault. But we also crash for many reasons which are not our own fault as bikers. So I'm bringing all this up because of the private roads course. <laughs> Look at him go. Look at him go. I'm bringing all this up because of the private roads course which I took, you know, the other day. I think what we just saw kind of exemplifies what I'm talking about, that riding is more for fun than anything else. I mean, bikes are so fucking fast. It's crazy, man. I mean, that was a 650, a Honda 650F with a few mods to it, and it just blew by traffic like it was standing still, and that was no problem at all for it. I've got an R1200 GS, look at this, he's way past my buddy on his S1000RR who was taking it easy, and he's way past myself on my R1200 GS taking it easy, and he's on a 650. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy how much power bikes made after, say, 2000, 2001 have. My main reason for saying that riding is more for fun than anything else, though, was because riding is really... I mean, it really is for fun, because riding for transportation, riding as a tool, only makes sense over driving in very specific scenarios. And I... One of the reasons I'm using this video is because this is one of those scenarios when the only reason you're out on the roads at all is to have a good time. You're not using the roads to get somewhere. You're literally going from your house back to your house. And you're not gaining anything on the way. You're just going. So looking at my notes, the next reason riding is more for fun than anything else is because of texting and driving. And that's something we all have to acknowledge as riders, is that drivers are paying less and less attention to the roads than they ever have. Cars are becoming extremely safe, and cell phones are becoming extremely powerful. The combination of these two things means that riding 
is becoming honestly more dangerous than it ever has been that's something we have to acknowledge and we have to train for we have to train for drivers merging into us and I'll, I'll, I'll start right here and say that you know the private roads class did train us on this pointy end of the cone was a great training exercise for riding off the road. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm drunk. Pointing into the cone was a great exercise for riding off the line you expected. Not riding off the road. Staying on the road is key, but riding off the line you expected to have to ride. So the next thing that really gets people when it comes to riding being more fun than driving is that old equation, energy equals mass times speed squared, okay? You have to square your speed, okay? That means 90 miles an hour is twice as fast as 60 miles an hour. 120 miles an hour is four times as fast as 60 miles an hour, okay? Not twice as fast, four times as fast. The other thing we have to remember is that in collisions, energy is conserved, okay? And the big thing is mass times velocity one equals mass times velocity two. So while energy is conserved as the square of your velocity, the collision equation does not take that square into effect. Basically what that means is the vehicle with the most mass wins the collision. So when you crash into a vehicle that weighs a whole lot more than your vehicle, say a car or an SUV or a truck, you're getting absolutely demolished in your collision. You might go fucking flying. You might take a fall from a huge height because of this collision. You might get absolutely demolished by the vehicle itself. And the thing of it is, vehicles are getting heavier and heavier. You know, cars, trucks, SUVs, four-wheeled vehicles are getting heavier and heavier. And the drivers of these vehicles are getting less and less attentive. So yeah, we try to improve our skills as motorcycle riders, but at the end of the day, the big reason for a lot of these crashes and a lot of these injuries is the vehicles themselves. You know, the next bullet point I want to put on my video here is the reasons that we crash. Not, you know, what happens when we crash. But the reasons that we crash. You know, I'm doing this pretty bad. I'm pretty drunk. I wrote my I wrote my speech while I'm drunk, and I'm presenting it while I'm drunk. So, y'all gonna have to fucking deal. Okay. I've watched a lot of crash videos in my in my day. You know, Moto Madness has put out thousands of crashes, and I've watched every single one of them. So I'm gonna go through three things. Well. Let me let me add a couple things here. Okay, four things. I'm going to go through four things. The first thing is failure to pay attention. This is the number one cause of motorcycle crashes. It's the reason you blow the entrance to your corner. It's the reason you blow the exit to your corner. It's the reason that that churning vehicle 
gets in front of you. It's also the reason It's also the reason that that merging vehicle gets into you. Okay? So I I said I'd present four things. I'm going to present five things. Okay? And all five of those things all other all the other four things are related to this. And that's the failure to pay attention. You get a little tired. You get a little distracted. You get a little confident. And now all of a sudden you're not paying attention. This has caught me out myself. Okay? I have zoned out on a motorcycle to such an extent that I ran off a straight interstate I ran off a 66 while it was straight I was in the left lane and I just zoned out completely and the next thing I knew I was on the fucking grass on 66 and if I had handled that situation correctly I would have crashed absolutely I completely would have crashed I don't have that on video but I totally fucked up and my failure to pay attention could have cost me my life easily. So besides the failure to pay attention, let's say you are paying attention. What's the kind of thing that's going to cause you to crash? I think Mr. Bill Sink has it correct. And that's blowing the entrance to corners. Now, what causes us to blow the entrance to the corners. Is it entering the corner too hot? Maybe. But really, what causes most people to blow the entrance to corners is the inability to trail brake. Most people think that when you're braking hard, you can't increase your lean angle. Basically, what they think is Braking plus lean angle equals front end crash. And because that's the kind of thing you see in professional motorcycle racing. Most crashes in professional motorcycle racing are front end crashes while on the brakes. So most people think that that's what causes them to crash. But in the reality of the situation, the, the issue is they're not loading the front end tire properly, right? Basically, what you want to do is increase the load on the front end tire on the front tire to increase your contact patch. Then while your contact patch is nice and big, start leaning in. Then as you lean in, start decreasing your load on the brake. That keeps the contact patch nice and big while not overusing the tire. You want to trail off the brakes as you increase your lean angle. And that's a big reason a lot of people crash. And we cover that in the Private Roads class. It was absolutely amazing. The next reason that a lot of people crash, and I think almost everyone who rides is guilty of this, and that's blowing the exit. Basically, by blowing the exit, what I mean is increasing your throttle while you're increasing the rate of angle change in a given unit of time. Now, that's a very hard concept for me to explain, especially while I'm drunk. Okay? So, the big thing you have to understand is the rate of change of direction. Basically, the rate that the angle of attack, given, you know, you know, a 360 degree angle. Basically, your rate, the rate at which your angle changes is given by your speed and by your lean angle. Okay, so the more speed you have, the less rate of change you have, while the more lean angle you have, the more 
rate you you have. So these two these two effects are countering each other. Speed is bad. Less lean angle is bad. Basically, low speed plus high lean angle equals a huge change in direction. So the thing you have to understand is that as your change in direction increases, so basically, as your speed decreases and as your lean angle increases, you do not want to add throttle. You only want to add throttle if you can decrease lean angle. I'll say that again. You only want to add throttle as you can decrease lean angle. And this catches so many people out, including myself. I have personally crashed because I've increased lean angle and increase throttle at the same time, okay? It just does not work. And these are the these are the big two causes of crashes in corners, right? But what causes us to crash outside of corners? So outside of motorcyclists fucking up directly what causes crashes? Well, one of the biggest causes of crashes is honestly, it's pure speed. Okay? Going around the corner with too much speed. Okay? You didn't blow the entrance. You didn't blow the exit. You did everything right. But you went around at such a rate that a vehicle at the exit of the corner just didn't fucking see you. That happened to me today. I took a corner nice and fast. Perfect entrance. Perfect mid-corner. Perfect exit. Everything was fucking perfect. Except the fact that that motherfucker through that blind corner did not see me. Okay? And he pulled out right in front of me. What did I have to do? I had to slam on the brakes and I had to swerve. Had I not had the skills I learned from the various classes I had taken, including private roads, I, I very well could have crashed into that vehicle, which was an SUV. A vehicle which would have fucking destroyed me! Okay? In a, in a collision. Just absolutely demolished me. So churning vehicles is something that you have to run into whether or not you're speeding. On all kinds of roads, there's vehicles making right turns and vehicles making, more importantly, left turns. And this is the kind of thing that really gets bikers. And I'm not talking about noob bikers that blow corners, but I'm talking about good bikers. I really don't even know what to say. And I think this leads into the next point. Merging vehicles and merging bikers. When you're trying to change lanes, vehicles will change lanes into you, and you will change lanes into vehicles. It's just the way of the world. Are you perfect? No. Are they perfect? No. But that kind of shit causes wrecks. So the next thing I want to talk about is the private roads class kind of things that they taught us, you know, and how I believe that applies to what I've talked about so far. So the main lesson that I learned from private roads was to trail brake whenever possible. The idea is, and I will say this again, brake in a straight line, and as you increase your lean angle, decrease your brake pressure it's oh, it's honestly a very difficult concept braking at just the right time while you're straight up and down braking at just the right pressure and then trailing off the brakes at just the right rate while increasing your steering 
at just the right rate. Holy shit! That's a hard thing to do. And I'm really glad that at the Private Roads class, I was able to practice it. So, the next thing we learned at Private Roads was downshifting. So, blipping the throttle while you downshift. That's the big thing, right? Keeping your revs matched. I think anyone who is a car aficionado totally understands blipping the throttle while downshifting and double clutch downshifting as well. If you don't know how to double clutch downshift, how can you call yourself a car person? You know what I mean? How can you call yourself a car person when you're downshifting without double clutching? Like, if you're going from 5th to 3rd directly, and you don't double clutch, come on. Come on, what the fuck are you doing? Anyways, the big thing I learned was use the pad of your finger. Not, of use, use, you know, the top pad of your finger, and not the joint, to feel the brake lever. And holy crap, that works. You get more feel on the brake. <laughs> Excuse me. You get more feel on the brake. And you get more feel when you're trying to downshift and blip the throttle. You know, you're twisting the throttle. So you have to uh, adjust the pressure you put on the brake lever. You're adjusting the angle of attack. So you have to adjust the pressure to keep the pr actual pressure on the master cylinder the same. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. The final thing we covered in the class was body position. And this was actually something that kind of surprised me. You know, uh, Mr. Sink, Bill Sink, he does not think you should shift your butt while you're on the road. And I have to kind of agree, because when you're out there riding long rides during the day, you really want to conserve your energy. You, you're not out there for 20 minutes at a time. You're not out there for one race at a time. You're out there all fucking day, doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles. So shifting your butt around using your legs to that extent is going to kick your ass. And for most people, it's just not feasible. So moving your upper body only seems to make the most sense. And I have to agree, I mean, you get most of, you get most of the effect by just moving your head in your upper body. And it takes so much less energy than trying to move your butt. It's it's such a good idea. And as weird as it sounds, it's not something I've really th thought about in the past. So here we are at the conclusion of this. The conclusion of my whole fucking stupid little speech. And that is... Perhaps the name Private Roads doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm going to say it, Bill, Mark, and everyone else. The name Private Roads just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's not what I experienced in the class. What I experienced was something very close to the Lee Park's Total Control Motorcycle Clinic. Okay? We covered the basics of performance riding. What does it take to safely ride a motorcycle quickly? That's what we covered. So calling it private roads doesn't adequately explain what you're trying to accomplish, Mr. Sink. It just doesn't. So please consider changing the name to something. Introduction to sport riding. Sport Riding 101, Introduction to Track Riding, 
Eh, I don't like that. I don't like introduction to track riding. Eh, it's hard to say. The next thing I have to say is riding is riding because it doesn't make logical sense. Okay? One of the things that makes riding the motorcycle in America, at least for most of us, so great is that it doesn't make sense. We can't lane split. Okay? We're not in California. We have to we have to sh we have to give cars the exclusive right to their position on the road and that really makes motorcycling kind of impractical we don't have any advantages over cars to negate the big disadvantage which is the danger we have to face we're facing all this danger and what real advantage are we getting emotional we're getting it. Yes, we're getting an emotional advantage for a physical disadvantage. How can you justify that? Seriously, I love riding, and I'm not giving it up. But at the same time, how can I justify that? You want you want to send a man home to his wife? You want to send him home with? How can he justify riding? You want to send a woman home to her husband? Send her home by telling her how she can justify riding. You know, Mr. Sink, Mr. Leonard, I hope I didn't mess your name up. You know, you guys are so far beyond the level that I'm at. Maybe you can answer the question I'm trying to ask. Why is riding better than driving? Why do I enjoy it so much? I just don't get it. I love it. I love riding. But if I were to try to justify it in a speech, if I were to try to write it down and submit it to a college professor, I don't know how I would do it and get the grade. You know, I don't know how I'd pass. That's something y'all need to think about. Why is riding so much so much fun what makes riding so fun that's what you need to find on those private roads classes you need to get people who are newer to riding people who don't understand sport riding and people who don't understand perhaps riding through traffic and you need to teach them how to deal with these things and that's that's the big thing that I don't get. How do you ride through traffic? I just don't know. So riding's dying. I mean, it really is. Less and less people from my generation. You know, I'm 30 years old. Less and less people from my generation. And less and less people from even the next generation. Say the guys who are 15 to 16 are riding. What are we going to do to save it? I, I don't know. I want to help. I want to make riding something that those folks from the next generation can appreciate. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the private roads class. And I love riding. That's why I made an entire video. That's why I did five takes. That's why I took 35 lines plus spaces of notes, 28 lines or something like that of notes. Thirty-one lines? I don't fucking know. That's why I took thirty lines of notes. You know guys, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I love riding. Spread it to your friends. Spread it to your family. And think about it. Think about your riding.